y'all. Welcome to another edition of my top 20 favorite albums of all time. And like I mentioned in a previous episode, depending on what way you're watching these, um, I'm not putting these in any kind of order. These are just, here's the 20 records. They're not, you know, number 20, not counting them down, you know. So uh, this is uh, the second batch, and uh, let's just get right into it. 1978, we get The Police debut album, Outlandus de Amor. Uh, this, I mentioned it on another video. I don't remember which album I was talking about, but... Uh, 1978, what a year for like debut albums because you get this album, you get the Cars debut and you get Van Halen's debut, all three of them in that same year. And all three of those, I could have easily put any of those on this list because all three of those records are perfect, you know, through and through. And, uh, so, but we've, today we've got right now the police one. And uh, I guess, you know, we were all growing up, you know, in the 80s, we were all fans of the police. Obviously, they were just like on a whole other level when Synchronicity came out in 1983. Um, but I guess that's, I, I feel like when I really got into the police is when I started driving, because I remember having all of the cassettes, uh, all five of their cassettes in my car that I would listen to a lot. So. It must have been sometime in high school that I really started getting into them and buying uh, their albums and stuff. But um, this record, I mean, they have a, you know, I talked about those three debut albums, including this one. But even The Police, I mean, I could have easily picked, you know, any one of their records. I mean, their five records are all, like, you know, awesome albums, you know. Um, so picking, like, just one is a little difficult. I could easily have... Zenyatta Mandata, I definitely could have easily put here. Um, but, uh, but you know, I went with this one because this record I just really, really dig, like, through and through every track, you know, Next to You, So Lonely, Roxanne, Hole in My Life, Peanut, Can't Stand Losing You, Truth Hits Everybody, Born in the 50s, even Be My Girl Sally, I kind of dig, you know? The, 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 um, like the guitar on that, I really, really love the uh, the guitar intro before it gets into the little spoken word thing that Andy Summers does. But, uh, you know, what a band. I got to see them live when they did their reunion uh, tour, and I was glad I did. And it was a good show. You know, it would have been awesome seeing them back in the day, but uh, I just didn't have that opportunity. I think the closest I came was maybe when they reunited for that Amnesty tour that happened and the police kind of got together for a couple of those shows. I don't know how many of them, but I, I came close to seeing them there, but you know, they were great band. Uh, you know, maybe sometimes don't get their due. People kind of talking about like the great rock bands of all time. Sometimes these guys are kind of for some reason forgotten. I don't know why, but they were such a great band. I wish when they reunited, they maybe had done a you know a little bit of recording maybe a couple of songs or put out an ep or just would have been cool and interesting to hear what they would have come up with all those years later but i obviously sting has no interest in that you know he just wants to do shit his way pardon my french 1987 we get the replacements please to meet me i always kind of debate between this record and Tim, of which are my favorite. Let It Be is really good. I even like uh, Don't Tell a Soul. Um, but uh, I don't know. I feel like these two records, Please to Meet Me and Tim, were just kind of like, that was the band, like just as good as they could be. Um, and I love both of them. I chose this one instead of Tim. Um, like I said before, you know, like, Ask me two months from now, maybe I put Tim here instead, but uh, you can't go wrong with either one of those. But this is such a great, great record. And I got into the replacements, I think, like late, maybe, I don't think I was in college yet. I think I was still in high school. Uh, but the uh, like late 80s, when I started really kind of, they became like they got like uh, some more airplay on the local station, uh, FM 106.3, that we would listen to. I started hearing them a lot in that. I started shifting away from a lot of Top 40 and stuff, which I was listening to, and all the music videos that I was seeing were all like Top 40 and, you know, the big rock bands of the time. And 
late 80s, I start getting more into like, you know, your alternative college music. And I start listening to FM 106.3. And that's where I hear bands like, you know, The Replacements and Drama Rama, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, great band, great album. IOU's on here. Alex Chilton, of course, is awesome. I used to play that on my radio show at College Radio all the time, constantly. Nightclub Jitters, The Ledge, Nevermind, Valentine, Shooting Dirty Pool, Red Red Wine, Skyways, awesome tune. And of course it ends with the song that, if you're not familiar with The Replacements, you're at least familiar with Can't Hardly Wait, because uh, probably because of that movie. But um, great record, uh, great band, got to see them live. Never back in the day, although you know their concerts were sometimes infamous for being kind of a bit of a mess back in the day, but I saw them on their quasi reunion show. It was, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, just the two of them, but, uh, but it was still a good show. I saw them in, uh, Philadelphia outdoors under like where the bridge is right there and everything. It was, uh, I think it's called like festival pier or something. It was a pretty cool place to see a show. 1989, we get the primitives pure. I guess this is their, Second album, I guess. Yeah, I think this is their second album. First album, Lovely, came out before this. That was the one that had the song Crash that uh, if you know the Primitives, or if you're not familiar with the Primitives, you probably know Crash, you probably heard it. It was in Dumb and Dumber, uh, and uh, it was pretty popular. MTV really pushed Crash, the music video. Um, and I was really surprised that this band wasn't more successful here in the United States because they really had a great sound, kind of, Kind of a pop, you know, alternative sound with a little bit of that sort of sort of Velvet Underground kind of influence, psychedelic y kind of sound to them. Um, great singer, Tracy. This album, I remember picking up, I think I got this first, and then I went back and got Lovely. Uh, I got this again through uh, one of those record clubs. Uh, you know, I just heard, I heard the single, which was, I think, Sick of It. And, um, Heard that on FM 106.3, and I really loved that song. And, you know, the record club, sometimes you'd finagle it, so it was, like, almost free to get it. So I was like, you know, screw it. I like that one song. Let me pick it up. And then I got it, and then I listened to it, and I just loved this album, you know. And uh, they don't have a ton of stuff. They reunited a handful of years ago, and they put out an album called Spinorama. And, you know, it a lot of years had gone by since they performed or played together or put out music together and you listen to Spinorama and it's like, you know, it sounds like it came out right after this. It's just insane how good it sounds. Um, but this record is my favorite of theirs that they put out and their debut, Lovely, is really good. The album after this, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is. It's slipping my mind. It took me a while to find it because I don't, I don't even know if it ever really got released in the United States. I think I bought it as an import, but, um, but the tunes on here, Summer Rain is great, Sick of It, like I mentioned, Dizzy Heights, All the Way Down, Secrets, Keep Me in Mind, Lonely Streets is great, Way Behind Me, Can't Bring Me Down. All of these are great. Like, just such a, like, upbeat, fun record. This is, like, a really good, like, summer uh, album. 1981, we get The Who Face Dances. And anybody who's watching this video right now who's a Who fan is probably hitting stop or getting ready to write me hate mail or something. But look, I mean, I got this cassette in probably 1981 when it came out. My brother was a big Who fan. I'd hear him playing them all the time. I got this when the uh, album came out. It was right when I was like just starting to buy my own music. And this was the new record out. And I loved You Better Your Bet was all over the radio. And uh, and I would listen to this. I bought it on cassette originally. I would listen to this like nonstop that whole summer, just like in my headphones, mowing the lawn, whatever. I just constantly listening to it. And uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe it was partially out of it. it. Was like one of the only cassettes I had. But it's a it's a good record. I mean, it's look, it's it's not you know the Keith Moon who you know. It's Kenny Jones, and he's you know, serviceable. He's a good drummer. It's, he's not Keith Moon though. It just, you know, and he couldn't be Keith Moon, you know, it, Keith Moon couldn't be Kenny Jones. I mean, uh, you know, I'm sure you'd say, why would he want to? But you know, Kenny Jones is a good drummer, keeps the beat, you know, he's just not this whirlwind Tasmanian devil, Keith Moon. 
Um, but there's, this is full of some great, great tunes. I mean, I think this album, all, these tunes are just like, just great pop songs. There's no real kind of like story Pete's trying to tell with this album. It's just like, here's a handful of new tunes and hope you enjoy them. I, and I like them all. You better, you bet, of course, like I mentioned, don't let go to coat. The quiet one, did you steal my money? How can you do it alone? Daily records. And then the two at the end, you and another tricky day. I really love the artwork's really cool. Inside there's a poster it came with uh, and this just pretty much the cover of the album. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of Who fans aren't too thrilled with these two Warner Brothers albums, but uh, but like I said, this one I really liked, uh, and, and I still do. And, and, you know, of course, it's got that kind of sentimental sort of addition for me because it's something I listened to a lot when I was a little kid, just getting into music. But I stand by it. I think it's a great record, great, full of great, great rock pop tunes. 2004 brings us Sahara Hop Nights, Kiss and Tell. This is a band. I remember hearing or seeing their video for All Right, All Right uh, on Much Music, and I thought it was all right, you know, and it was decent, you know, it was kind of this pop punk tune, and uh, I thought it was pretty good, but it didn't really make me run out and want to dig up the album or listen to it or anything. And then a couple of years go by and I'm working at this uh, post-production place and we were doing this stuff for these college radio and uh, this has a lot of music videos on this thing that would go out to these college TV stations. And uh, we get the, uh, and one of the music videos is uh, the single, first single off of this album called Hot Night Crash. And I just remember working and hearing it in the background and turning around and being like, what is this? And I love the video. The video is really, really funny. Uh, I think it's a good music video, uh, but it's an awesome song and it just caught my ear and it just it was one of those things. It's like, I remember this band and, uh, you know, it didn't do much for me when I heard them, but now I'm hearing this and I just can't get enough of it. I'm like, you know, and so I just remember we we were like uh, like a little north of Times Square there, like um, in that kind of Broadway district in New York City on 49th and Broadway. And there was a Tower Records not far away. And I just remember like leaving work for a break and going to Tower Records and picking this up on CD and uh, coming back to work and just putting it in. And uh, it's a great record. I really love it. It's there's on this they started out a little more kind of punk and on this they're starting to there's still that sort of sound to them but they're starting to kind of get a little more pop oriented um but it's a great record and this i was shocked to even find this on vinyl i didn't even know it was on vinyl i saw somebody trying to sell one on ebay and uh, it was really beat up and that but that made me aware that it was on vinyl and I uh, started like hunting for it, you know, one of those holy grail records you're trying to find. And uh, I finally found this in Amoeba in Hollywood and I couldn't believe that I found it. It was just, it blew my mind, you know, that I was able to, to pick it up. Um, but the uh, tunes on here are all really great, man. Who Do You Dance For, Hot Night Crash, Empty Heart, Walk On The Wire, Mind Over Matter. Stay, stay away, keep calling me my baby. The difference between love and hell and hanging. Both of those last two tracks are really, really good. But uh, if you're not familiar with them and you like pop punk, uh, girl bands, whatever might you know be on your uh, plate that you might be, be a little interested in, I would highly recommend checking out this album. And then if you dig this, go pick up some of their other records. So Hara Hot Nights, Kiss and Tell, great band, great album. So that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. I'm going to do a couple more of these. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do my pull in my top 20. So, you know, got two down, two more to go. Uh, thanks for watching. I think I said that already. I'm repeating myself, but uh, like, subscribe to the video, all that stuff. And I'll uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again.